of the um, one of the misconceptions that that, uh, that we get when we speak with clients as McKenzie friends is that they assume that um, we can represent them in the same way as a solicitor can. They assume that when we get into a, into the family court or into a civil court, that we are going to speak on their behalf and that we are going to um, represent them in in the same way that that you would if you if you um, deployed a solicitor. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case. There, there are there are restrictions to being a Mackenzie friend, um, and I wanted to talk today about really just just one of those restrictions, which is us speaking for you in court. Um, as a Mackenzie friend, following the guidelines set out by the family court, we cannot speak on your behalf. So all the speaking that takes place in court, all of the conversation um, with the judge uh, and with the other side um, will be carried out by you. Now, having said that, there are a couple of exceptions to that. Um, there is um, a practice direction. Now, what a practice direction is, is it's a, it's a, it's a set of rules, for, 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 for simplicity's sake, um, that explain <clears throat> a certain set of circumstances and how they will be dealt with. And there are lots of practice directions. There are practice directions for all sorts of things about how, how, <coughs> how statements can be written and how people will be dealt with and how certain processes in the court will run. The practice direction that I want to talk about here, specific to this, particular conversation is practice direction 3AA um, which is in regard to vulnerable people and what that practice direction basically says is if the party who is leading the proceedings i.e. you if, if, if you're our client are leading the proceedings in court and you are deemed by the court to be vulnerable because you are um, possibly victim of domestic violence or abuse, possibly because you have a medical condition that deems you so, you are deemed to be vulnerable, and the court can sanction your Mackenzie friend to speak on your behalf and to deliver whatever address it was that you were going to make. Um, so that's one, that's one exception, that's one opportunity, um, but obviously we, you have to demonstrate to the court that you are vulnerable and the court has to agree um, with your definition. The court does have the right to grant um, what they call rights of audience. Rights of audience basically means that your Mackenzie friend can speak on your behalf because you are unable to for whatever reason, for whatever reason, be that for reason of medical or mental health issues or, or capability, whatever. But but so the, the court can issue rights of audience to your Mackenzie friend, but they will only issue those in very extreme circumstances. And they will only issue those in a situation where <clears throat> the judge, and it's boiled down to the judge, the judge makes that decision on a case by case basis, um, where the judge believes that it may be in the best interests of the proceedings in order for you to have rights of audience. Now in the, the um, years that I've been practicing, I've had rights of audience on a number of occasions um, where the circumstances dictated it, um, where the circumstances allowed it. Um, it's not something that I, that I seek because I, I choose not to want to try and abuse the facilities that are available within the court, so it's not something that I seek regularly. So if I'm not seeking it, how am I supporting my client by not speaking in court? So what I'm doing instead is I am alongside them and I am guiding them quietly as to what it is that they should be saying, what it is they should be asking. And if there's a situation in court, possibly at the end of a contested trial, um, where my client in court is given the opportunity to make a submission, i.e. effectively close their case with a summary statement, we will work very closely with them in order to, to um, prepare and write that statement so that it is available to them on a screen or on paper at the moment where they're asked to, complete, to, uh, to deliver it. Then at least what they're delivering is considered. It's a, it's, a, it's a collaborative effort. It's us working with the client in order to arrive at something that has um, legal weight to it, social weight to it, and emotional weight to it. 
Um, so that's a role, and we believe we can fulfil that role um, with as much value to the process as if we were speaking on your behalf. So a Mackenzie friend in court um, for, let's say, the majority of occasions cannot speak on your behalf. They can merely advise you quietly on what it is that you should be saying or asking. As I've said already, there are a couple of exceptions to that rule, one of them being uh, Practice Direction 3 AA for vulnerable people, um, the other one being an application to get a right of audience which has to be given by the judge on the day of the hearing um, and with sufficient grounds where the judge believes that the proceedings will flow better if the Mackenzie friend has the opportunity to speak. Hopefully that clarifies that. Um, I don't think in any way that it diminishes the role of the Mackenzie friend. Um, we are there to support you. That's our role. We're, we're supporting you with our, with our emotional support. We're supporting you with our legal knowledge. Uh, and we're supporting you with our protocol knowledge, understanding what happens in court, what is going to happen next. Um, and knowing your case. We, we aim to know your case, certainly at Mackenzie Bacalf. We aim to know your case as well as you do. Because by doing that, two heads are better than one. Um, and that, that is probably the, the, the ultimate benefit that a Mackenzie friend, certainly through Mackenzie Picard, brings to the party, that two heads are always better than one. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to learn more about Danny Picard counselling, watch that video. If you want to learn more about Mackenzie Picard family law, watch that video. And remember to subscribe, because 68% of you haven't. See you next time.